The Eurozone's recovery may be fragile, but what about the outlook for the rest of the world's economies? I spoke with Dr. Robert Shapiro, chairman and co-founder of the economic advisory firm Senecon. He gave his insights on the challenges facing global growth and the progress that has been made over the past year. I would say we're marginally, we're in marginally better shape than we were a year ago. Uh, the fact is, um, Europe has had an enormous amount of trouble uh, getting it, making its way through the Euro crisis. There are inherent contradictions in the Eurozone and they have not resolved them. Uh, the United States and Europe both are caught in a political dynamic which puts emphasis not just on long-term budget cuts, but on short-term budget austerity, which is the wrong policy for an economy, either our, both ours and Europe's, still recovering, still having a weak recovery. In fact, the Eurozone is back in recession because of this. I, I want to get to Asia, but I also want to follow up on what you said. Yes. So if, if that's the case, the focus is too short-term, in other words, if yes. fixing the problem is a band-aid. Yes. Yes. What is the longer term solution? And, and is it a re realistic solution they would actually implement? With respect to the sovereign debt crises in Europe, they have to accept the European Central Bank as a true central bank that will step in to stabilize the value of the sovereign debt of any Eurozone member. The fact is that a, the fundamental meaning of a monetary union is that the full faith and credit of the whole stands behind the full faith and credit union is what of you each want. part. I want a true, true union. monetary union. Um, let's talk about another place in the world, um, dynamic as well, Asia. Yes. Uh, a, a lot of folks, you know, especially when it comes to China, it's growing too fast. Mm. It's growing too slow. And these are the things that we hear about in, in the papers and in the media. What is your view of what's happening in Asia and China? The problem that China faces is not that she's growing too fast, but that she's growing too unevenly. And this has been China's uh, challenge for the, ever since the reforms began. Uh, you know, they started with reforms in agriculture, then they put that aside, went to reforms in small business, put that aside, and then went to reforms in foreign in manufacturing uh, through this flood of foreign direct investment. The service sector has largely been left behind. In particular, the financial sector has been left behind. And that has caused in recent, in the last year or two, significant new problems with respect to the potential bubble in housing, the insolvency, the technical the insolvency. The unintended consequences. Yes. Um, speaking of which, quantitative easing. Mm. One, two, <laughs> twist, and three. Yes. Um, there's always cute names, but there's one in particular concern from around the world, and that's the commodity prices. There's a lot mm -hmm. of talk that we'd see commodity prices rise. Now, they have gone up, mm -hmm. but they haven't gone up three, four times fold is what some people had feared. Mm. Should we still worry about inflation on a global scale? Is that still a main concern? No, it's not a main concern at this point on a global level. It's certainly not a main concern in uh, Europe where the continent is in recession. It's not a main concern in the United States where unemployment remains high and growth remains way below trend. It's certainly not a concern in Japan which is still struggling with deflation. Yes, it is a potential concern in China, uh, but that's a normal product of extraordinarily fast growth. The only difference is that China is doing it in the context of globalization, and everybody else did it in the context of national economies that had much fewer connections with the rest of the world.